What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox news video. Today, LaunchBox 10.3 has been released. Like with every LaunchBox release, there's some new fixes, some improvements, and new features. In this video, I want to go over some of the new features and demo them. A lot of the stuff from the latest poll has been tackled, and if I do miss anything here, I will leave a link to the official change log so you can check it out for yourself. The first new feature is something that I've been wanting for a little while now because I like to mess around with my settings and sometimes I forget what I changed. We now have a new option to create a data backup or restore a data backup. Keep in mind, this is only going to back up your data and settings. This will not back up your media files or games. This will come in really handy for a lot of people and it's very simple to use. So we're going to jump over to LaunchBox and this is going to back up your data and settings for LaunchBox and BigBox, but you do have to access it from within LaunchBox. In order to create or restore a backup, we need to go to Tools. And at the very top here, we have Create Data Backup. The default location is in the LaunchBox installation folder under Backups, but you could place this anywhere. And what I like to do every once in a while is just place this on my desktop and then back it up to my Google Drive. Like I mentioned, I do mess around with the settings in LaunchBox and BigBox a lot, and sometimes I just get lost or forget what I changed. So this is going to make it really easy to restore those settings. I'm just going to create one here, just save. It's now saved. In order to restore, we'll head back up to Tools, Restore Data Backup, and it's going to be your custom LaunchBox data backup. We'll just make sure it's highlighted, click Open. LaunchBox will have to restart to restore your data, so I'll click Yes. And my data and settings have been restored from that backup. Keep in mind, this does not back up your games or your media. But nonetheless, this is a very handy option added to LaunchBox 10.3. Next on the list, game controllers have been completely overhauled in LaunchBox and BigBox. Xbox 360 and Xbox One controller guide buttons, which is the Xbox button in the middle of your controller, can now be used anywhere. They can be mapped inside of LaunchBox or BigBox. Also, if you're using a PS4 controller, the guide buttons can be used, but you need to be in X input simulation mode. If you want to use your Xbox guide button and you're running Windows 10, there is one setting that needs to be turned off inside of Windows 10. We're going to go down here to our Windows 10 settings, under Gaming, and make sure Open Game Bar using this button on the controller is turned off. That Xbox Menu button needs to be turned off inside of Windows 10 in order for this to work. Otherwise, this will take priority over LaunchBox and BigBox and you won't be able to use it. But other than that, it works really well. And I will demo that in just a second, but most of the other new features have to do with the controller, so we're going to go over these before we get into BigBox and LaunchBox. Multiple controller bindings can now be used everywhere. All controller bindings can now be a button combination. Even if you want to set up a button combination just to navigate inside of BigBox, you can do that by, let's say, holding Start and pressing up on your D-pad. And the opposite is also true for controller automation. Bindings that used to require a button combination can now be mapped to a single button. For instance, in the past, if you wanted to enter the LaunchBox or BigBox pause menu, you had to set up a button combination. Now you can just map it to a single button, like Start or Select. And finally, left stick, right stick, and the trigger axes can now be bound to actions. So let's just say you wanted to set up your left analog stick by pressing down to start a game. Personally, I would never do this, but it can now be mapped inside of LaunchBox and BigBox with the new controller settings. And action buttons on your controller can now be bound to navigational movement. So you could set up Y for up, A for down, X for left, B for right. It's totally up to you but we hope that a lot of the controller issues inside of LaunchBox and BigBox have been solved with these new features. So we now finally have full customization over our controllers inside of LaunchBox and BigBox. To access the new controller mapping menu inside of LaunchBox, we need to go up here to Tools, Options, Game Controllers, and make sure you have your default controller chosen. I have one controller plugged into this PC. It's an Xbox One controller. Now on to Mappings. Select, Back, Context Menu, Play Games, we have it all in here. I'm going to focus on the Context Menu. If I want to add a bind to this, I can do a single button by pressing Add. And I'm going to actually make that single button my Xbox button on my controller. It's now set to the Guide button on my controller. So if I want to access the Context Menu, I'll click OK, choose a game, press my Guide button. Now let's say we want to set up multiple buttons to access the Context Menu. We'll go back to Tools, Options, Mappings, and I'm going to clear this out, my Context Menu. 
When we click Add, it tells us we can press a controller button, stick direction, or a combination of two. Now one thing to note is if you want to use your Xbox Guide button, don't set that as your first button. When you hold the Guide button down on an Xbox One controller for about 4 seconds, it turns the controller off, so make sure you set up a hotkey before that. I'm going to hold Start, and then press my Xbox Guide button. Now we've set up kind of a hotkey situation here. I have to hold Start, and then press my Xbox Guide button to access my Contacts menu. And this can be mapped this way with any of these settings here. So I'll click OK. I still have this game chosen. If I press my Xbox Guide menu, nothing's going to happen. Hold Start, press my Xbox Guide menu, brought up my Contacts menu for me. And in the same fashion, you can set up multiple keys for the same exact instance. Last time here, Tools, Options, Mappings, we'll clear this out, I'm going to add a button, we'll do Xbox Guide button, I'm going to add another button to the same context menu, left trigger. So now I have two options for my context menu, I can either press my Xbox Guide button or my left trigger to access it. I personally kind of like keeping it clean, so I'm just going to set it right back to my Xbox Guide button. Xbox Guide, OK. And that's pretty much it inside a launch box. We have full customization over our controller inside a launch box and big box. Speaking of big box, to access the new controller mapping options, we're going to get into the menu, options, and all the way down at the bottom, we have controller and controller mappings. Again, make sure you have your default device set up, and we'll go to controller mappings. Navigate up, down, left, and right. I have this set up as my D-pad up and my left stick up. But you can now map any button to this. So if you wanted to use Y for up, A for down, X for left, or B for right, you could do it in here. I'm going to leave mine set up just like this because I prefer using my D-pad and analog sticks to navigate. But there is one option inside of here that I'd really like to change, and that's Show Pause Screen. In the past, we had to use controller automation to get our pause screen to show up, but I'd like to set it up as a single button now. I'm going to go over a few different options here. You can use your keyboard to select this by pressing Enter, or you could press A on your controller as long as that's how you have it set up. Show pause screen. Press the controller button, stick direction, or trigger to assign to this action. We can also make combinations. So from here, to show my pause screen while I'm playing a game, I'm going to set it up as my start button. I'll press start. Now when I get into a game, I no longer have to use kind of a key combination here. I can just press start, it'll show my pause screen, I can save, load, and exit from there. But if you do want to set up a hotkey situation here, press A. Now to clear this, you'll press escape on your keyboard, that's the only way to clear it right now. We'll have nothing set up for show pause screen. I'll press A again to select it, and I'm going to set up a key combination. Like I said, if you're using your Xbox Guide button, make sure it's the second button you use. So I'm going to hold start. I'm going to press my Xbox Guide button, and now my pause screen is back to the old hotkey situation. So in order to access my pause screen, I have to hold Start, press my Guide button while I'm playing a game, it'll bring me to the pause menu, I can save, load, and exit from there. It's really awesome to see this new feature built into LaunchBox because for a long time I've been wanting full customization over my controllers in LaunchBox and BigBox, and it's finally here with LaunchBox 10.3. This is also really good news for people who use kind of obscure arcade sticks or arcade encoders that don't really program correctly from the factory. I personally have one of the new Ultimark Bluetooth encoders and I was never able to get it set up correctly because I was never able to map my up, down, left, and right. And now I have a really awesome custom Bluetooth arcade stick that I can use with LaunchBox without any issues. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We really appreciate you watching and hope you enjoy LaunchBox 10.3. I think this is a great addition to LaunchBox and BigBox, something I've been looking forward to for a long time now. And it's finally added. I will leave a link in the description to the changelog in case you want to go ahead and read over this. If you have any questions at all, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.